Um, my name is Alex Wettgeb. I'm co-founder of Vplay GmbH. Um, Vplay is a Qt technology partner and we are offering a mobile game engine on top of Qt and um, also offering Qt quick plugins for integrating third-party services like um, ad networks of Facebook within your Qt-based iOS and Android applications. So in this talk, I want to share um, our learnings and some insights of our journey on implementing these plugins. So since um, the release of Qt 5, um, the Qt platform um, kind of sees a renaissance of um, the mobile platforms. This is especially true for the release of Qt 5.2, where full support for iOS and Android was added. However, when it comes to um, native functionality and um, native services, there is still a gap between the code once, deploy everywhere approach and reality. So let's look into some examples. Um, all the following examples are actually based on um, one of our plugins. Um, our plugins uh, behave like normal Qt Quick um, items, like you're used to it. So um, you can set its properties like the visibility, and you can also use um, position anchoring or use property bindings, which are really cool to, to implement. So as a really short example, um, there is an ad banner, which is only visible if um, the in the purchase code named no ads code is um, not purchased, and it's anchored to the parent bottom item. So in this case, to the window to the bottom. So let's go into some examples. Um, the first task um, for um, native functionality is actually calling native functions from C++ to Objective-C or either Java and Android. So on um, iOS, this is a rather, rather simple task um, thanks to the iOS compiler, which can speak Objective-C++, which is actually only the combination of Objective-C code from iOS and the C++ code. So you just have to make sure that um, you give your iOS implementation file the .mm ending and add it to the objective sources block of your project file. You can then um, simply call within your um, C++ functions um, pure Objective-C functions like in this example from our Flurry plugin. So Flurry is basically just an analytics framework for um, mobile apps and games where we uh, just simply log an event which occurred in our app and send it directly to the um, native Flurry implementation, which is yeah, a framework provided by the Flurry company. On Android, things are a little bit different. Um, as Bogdan already mentioned in a talk earlier this day, um, you have to go through the Java native interface. Um, since Qt 5, there is um, this handy class called Qt Android JNI object. Um, you can use it when you just add the library in your project file, Qt plus um, equals Android extras. And this Q Android JNI object um, allows you to, on the one um, side, um, create custom um, Java object instances, and on the other side you can then call um, object methods on these instances. So as an example, again, from our Flurry example, um, we create a Java string instance called Java event with Q Android JNI object from string with the actual um, name of our event and then can call um, the static object method log event on the Flurry agent, which is again shipped with the Flurry framework and uh, pass that um, Java event to it. Okay, so calling methods is easy. How about callbacks? Um, again, on iOS, this is uh, a simple task. So a typical approach in iOS is to use a delegate object for callbacks. Um, like the sample um, delegate object named addDelegate, which is a code snippet from our Chartboost plugin. So Chartboost is basically just an ad framework, especially for games. And again, thanks to Objective C++, we can simply um, pass a reference of our C++ item, of our Qt Quick item, into the um, Objective-C class of the app delegate, and later on when a callback comes in from the native implementation, we can simply call a method on this item again. On the Java side on Android, you again have to go all the way through JNI. Um, there are two approaches. The first one, yeah, before I, I, I go in, into the approaches, and um, there is one little problem when you call um, some callbacks from Java back to the C++ part. Um, these callbacks are basically just static methods in C or C++. So you have the problem that you can't access um, your reference to your C++ item directly. 
So you have to find some approaches how you can access it again. So the first approach is just passing around an object reference, or to be uh, more specific, the pointer address of our C++ item. So you can pass a long um, variable to the um, to your Java object when you initialize it, and you can then later on pass it back in the JNI callback and cast it again to your item, and then finally call again your function of your C++ item. This might get you into some troubles, which is the case if your um, C++ item already got freed, but your Java instance still tries to call some code on it. So it's probably better to um, hold a global static reference on your item or a map of global static references if you have multiple instances of a Java object. Okay, the next topic I want to talk about um, are custom native views you might want to add to your Qt Quick application. <laughs> Examples are app banners, like I already mentioned them, or a web view, or just a video playback control. So basically all the um, Qt Quick items are rendered in one OpenGL view on the platform. So there is the problem that you can't really easily um, add um, native views in the view stack of your Qt Quick items. But what's possible is that you can overlay them, which is um, almost sufficient for all the use cases. For example, app banners or video playback control, which is always in front of the rest of your items. So how to do that? On iOS, um, you simply um, get a new view. In this example, it's the AdMob plugin, where you have a banner view. And you can then add it as a sub-view of your cute OpenGL view, which you can retrieve through the UI application, shared application, key window, root view, controller path. And on Android, it's um, yeah, very similar. You can get the Qt activity, which holds the content view, the Qt um, OpenGL view, with the help of um, the Qt native class. And then you can simply add a second content view on top of your Qt OpenGL view. Uh, in this example, you should also make sure that you synchronize um, the um, the sizes of your custom native view and your QML quick item so that it perfectly aligns with property bindings and um, anchoring. And the last task I want to talk about are uh, application lifecycle events. So um, sometimes your code needs to get notified as soon as some application state changes occur. For example, your app goes to the background and you want to stop video playback or your app is started um, from a local notification, a user taps a banner, and you want to retrieve um, the, yeah, the, the parameters which come in with the local notification, which is actually the, the case for our local not notification plugin. So there are two approaches, the simple approach and the advanced approach. The simple approach is to use um, the Qt provided um, signal handler. There is the application state changed signal in the QGUI application class. Um, you can connect to it, and your custom slot needs the Qt Q, uh, application state um, parameter, which you can then use to switch between the different application states. If you need a finer control about your, um, your lifecycle events, you still have to go native. So one approach on iOS is, for example, as on iOS all the state handling is done in the um, UI application delegate object, which is already implemented in Qt that you just replace your delegate and call in a custom code in there. But um, please also make sure that you keep a reference to the old delegate, which is actually the Qt implementation, and call the functions of the Qt, um, of the Qt implementation. Otherwise, you might break some things in your app. And on Android, it's again very similar. Sorry, I can skip that because of the time. Um, in Android, it's very similar. You can get um, the Qt activity from the Android bindings um, package and um, can subclass the Qt activity and add your custom code in there. Again, make sure that you call super on trade, like in this example, otherwise your app might not start up. Okay, so that's all, I guess. Um, thanks. My name is Alex Lotkov, and if there are any questions, we are out on the presentation.